Howdy peeps, um, just a quick little updatey type thing with the build review of the Bronco Models KV122. Now you may have watched, probably not, I did do a kit review out of the box of this kit not too long ago. Well I've got a bit of a break, had enough of building pups lately, uh, the last few kits I've built have been absolutely uh, horrible. So I thought I'd break this out of the box and stick it together see how it goes and yeah it's not a bad build at all really um, everything fits uh, there's a few minor minor grumbles but not really grumbles just points um, yeah I've got written down what I want to talk about so I mean, my overall impression of it is it's a good solid kit worth the money nothing massively wrong with it I mean it does Let's put that out of the way. Start with the lower hull. Um, ooh, from the sides, we do have the workable torsion bar suspension one, well, not that one because that one broke, but the rest of the torsion bars are all workable. The wheels have got spindles in so they will turn. Um, not a huge amount of etch on this, and some of what there was I didn't use. I mean, you probably never see it, but there is a grill up inside there for the exhaust. Um, I'm being gentle with it because the guardrail, uh, handrails, and grab rails, there aren't any locating marks for those. Um, no drill holes, nothing. So they are literally just surface glued on. But you know, as long as we, as long as we're gentle when we come to weathering it and don't batter it about too much they shouldn't fall off. Um, the engine covers, grills, they do come as etch in the kit as well but they are extremely fiddly. Um, basically you get the actual grill section and then you get the surrounds in multiple pieces, well I think it's two pieces for the surround then there's an over, a bit over it as well and I pretty much put, started putting one together and realised it was going to look like hell. And I thought, no, the plastic ones look really good anyway. Um, if I bring it up a bit closer, uh, will it focus? Will it focus? Will I get it in the shot? I mean, you can see, I mean they're really crisp and sharp. I can probably hear if I run with it. Um, so I think once it's painted you probably won't notice any difference between those and the photo etch ones. Underneath the hatch there is an engine in there. Um, I built it, stuck it in, didn't bother painting it because I was going to the, glue the hatch shut. And there's also, probably not visible, right, oh, get the angles right. So uh, yeah, right in the front there, there is a driver's compartment, but again as the only hatch that opens into it is that tiny little one there you're never going to see any of it because it's all in front of there <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to have it in there up to the park count a little gives you more time to stick stuff together um, as I say everything fits copper tow ropes they actually gave me enough for four tow ropes so bonus means I've got spare for another vehicle one thing I will give them kudos on is the barrels. Now these, I mentioned in the kit review, the seams are actually, in, well you can see the glue marks, the seams are actually around where the straps go over the barrel. The centre part is moulded in one, slide mould I guess, so there are no seams on it at all. And it's even moulded in such a way that the little clips do actually clip into the side of the fenders. This is a really nice touch. I didn't really enjoy putting those together and put them. sad, I know. Now, whether I picked the wrong parts out or made the balls up or what, the only gap I did find, there are another set of these uh, side hull extensions, which I guess were for the KV to make it big enough to get the extra size turret in. Um, these ones do have, or didn't actually, well they fit, but there's a gap at the front and rear as you can see little bits of plastic card in there, oh, and 
that feather support I dropped and couldn't find, so I just cut another one out. Um, so it's the same both sides. Now there are another set in the box, which I'm guessing are for either a KV85 or an SU, or, you know, something else. I think they might be slightly bigger, so they might be the ones to go for, the ones on the D sprue. And yes, we're still left with the slide moulded 85mm barrel. There are a lot, a lot of parts, however, in this kit for tank destroyers. The, you can tell by the gun mantlets. Um, so I'm not sure whether there is one or there's one on the way of one of the... I'm guessing it's going to be an ISU 152 or Object 704 or something like that. Which I want if there is. Love me a big Japanese tank destroyer. Japanese? Russian tank destroyer. Anyway, lower hull done. Everything went together, no. Tiny little things, but things that are enjoyable to fix. Not things where you're using half a ton of filler and sanding for about six hours. Now, onto the turret. Again, went together flawlessly pretty much. It's a single piece barrel, I'm mean, solid, with a two piece muzzle brake. Um, but again, that all went together swimmingly. Same thing with the grab rails, there's no actual locating points, so they're a bit delicate. There was this, uh, a couple of seats and some interior detail on the hatches and cupola, but as I was going to be building it with everything, well, put it in shot might help sharp. As I was going to be building it with everything closed up, there's not really much point in sticking in a couple of seats, they're just going to get snapped off, so I left them. But they will go into my spares bin for later usage on something else. Uh, sprockets, wheels and idlers. I'll just grab one of each. Yeah, they're sprockets, wheels and idlers. They went together. No issues. No major seams. I haven't sanded them off yet. Um, I'll do that before I start priming. As you can see you've got the spindles in the wheels. You might be able to see if I bring it closer. Um, they can be left to run free but I glued them in. Same with the idlers. Sprockets just your normal big hole in. Again, they went together fine. Clean up was fine on the sprockets. I mean, the mounting points are between the teeth, but they're fairly big, chunky gaps, so it's not a problem. And the last thing, well, of the kit itself was the tracks. Now these weren't difficult, they weren't overly fiddly, but they are nicely workable single link tracks. Two runs of, I have actually built both. <laughs> um, it's somewhere around, I worked it out. Uh, 526 parts in total for the tracks. 88 links per side, two pins per track. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yes, the pins are very small, but I'll just quickly show you my specs. You do get lots of spare track parts. Rather than make sure we're in shot here, get the tracks out of the way a little. Uh, don't go right. Rather than actually snipping off the individual track pin. Yeah, you probably can't, yeah. Um, right there, tiny little. Because you're never going to be able to put that. But it, you're going to get it in, but it's going to be a nightmare. So what we do is we take the sprue. We clip off the whole part of the sprue with the guide pin attached. Or track pin, sorry. You then pop that in your hole, which gives you something chunkier to hold on to. Screw it together your uh, eight links because you only get the one jig and it'll only take eight links. Stick them all in, glue them, and then once the glue's set, just trim them off and you end up with pin tracks that are workable. Uh, it's probably fairly obvious, but something maybe not everyone knows. 
uh, other than that, the instructions. Um, clear as a bell, told you exactly what you wanted to know, where things went, what bits to use, how many to do. The only the only minor grumble in them was the casting numbers. Um, yeah, there are casting numbers on the sprues, so you can shave, shave them off with your knife or chisel. It doesn't actually tell you which numbers to use or where they go. Um, something I could probably do a bit of research and figure out, but as it's a prototype tank, I think it was only one or two ever built. Um, dum -dum -dum, does it sound the destructions? Yeah. Yeah, it was not ratified, so they built one, they tested it, and then. Well, you can't really blame them, but they went for the IS-2, which is an absolute beast of a tank. But you would not like to have been sat there in your... <laughs> well, you wouldn't like to have been in a Panther or a Panzer, but... Or a Tiger, sorry, but <laughs> you would not want to be in something like Panzer IV and seeing that beast rolling towards you across a field. Uh, that thing is probably going to make short work of pretty much any target it hits, especially if it's firing heat ammunition rather than uh, high explosive. But anyway, so my overall impression is superb kit. Few minor little things, nothing, nothing to make me go uh, or uh, I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend it. Um, not to people who don't like things with high parts counts, because it is a high parts count. I mean, it doesn't say, but I would guess somewhere around a thousand. Um, so overall, I think I would give it around about an eight out of ten. So good job, Bronco. Few little niggles, but no. Do you want every kit to go together perfectly? You want a few little challenges to make your life interesting. Just not the challenges I've had lately. Um, <laughs> anyway, keep up modelling, don't stick your head to the bench, and have fun. Bye bye.